We want to bring in now CBS News legal contributor uh, and Loyola Law School professor Jessica Levinson. Okay, Jessica, we were just talking about uh, Judge Eileen Cannon. Uh, and, and if any, now that we know or that we suspect she will stick to the case, uh, whether in Miami or in Fort Pierce, what difference can she make? Uh, and given what we know from her history with this precise case uh, and former President Trump. I think you asked the question exactly the right way, which is it's not just that Judge Eileen Cannon was appointed by the former president, which let's be clear, unlike any other criminal defendant today in America, the former president appointed the judge who will be overseeing this case. It's how she ruled in an earlier iteration of this case where the former president asked for a special master. There was no grounds for that she granted that request and she was ultimately overturned by the conservative 11th circuit and that three judge panel of the 11th circuit included two trump appointees which i mentioned just to say she was really outside the bounds of conservative legal thought in that ruling so how much of a difference could she make everything from a legal headache to substituting her own judgment and ultimately dismissing the case lilia which is something you asked me about before and she controls everything from the schedule of this case which obviously has different implications than a typical case because unlike other cases we're looking at the electoral calendar here and if the former president does become the nominee and if he actually wins the presidency again obviously that has big implications for that case for this case he would ask for the case to be dismissed he might try and pardon himself so the schedule makes a big difference she also has a lot of control over jury selection. And of course, for very obvious reasons, who's on this jury makes a big difference. And then finally, she can actually, under the federal rules of criminal procedure, she can actually substitute her own judgment like any other federal judge can for the judgment of the jury. After the prosecution has completed its case, before the jury reaches a verdict, she can say there's not enough evidence here. And if she makes that decision, it's not appealable. It's not reviewable. So that would be huge. I'm not saying that it's likely, but she has a lot of power. It matters who your judges are. Wait, wait a minute. Let me just make sure I understand this. I want to make sure I got my arms around this. You're saying she could substitute her judgment and essentially throw the case out? So under the federal rules of criminal procedure, there's something called Rule 29, which people are going to start hearing more about. And it allows federal judges, if there is a motion by the defense, which there always is, to say, you know what, I've heard the evidence and there's no need for the jury to deliberate in this case. And so depending on when that motion is granted, if the jury is impaneled but has not reached a verdict and the prosecution has completed its case, if she says there's not enough here, I've been sitting here, I've heard the prosecution's whole case, and she throws that out, that is not a reviewable decision, meaning throws the case out, dismisses the case. It could not be um, appealed up to the 11th Circuit because double jeopardy attaches once you've impaneled that jury. This is once the trial has taken place, once she has heard from the prosecution, once there's already a jury selected. So no time between now and then can she just toss it out under this rule. Under that rule, but Lillian, as you and I have talked about, she also has a lot of discretion over evidentiary issues. So, for instance, we've been talking about the portions of the indictment where um, the former president apparently said to his attorney, Evan Karkarin, um, well, what if we just didn't tell investigators we had anything? Essentially, what if we just lied? If portions of evidence like that are thrown out because Judge Cannon decides in pretrial motion practice dealing with discovery that those pieces of evidence should not reach the jury, that could also have a big impact. So there are steps along the way where she can throw out evidence and or the entire case, but that nuclear option where it's not reviewable, that's once the jury has been impaneled but not reached a verdict.